Welcome to the Endeavor Strategic Reserve. Incorporated in 2953, the Endeavor Strategic Reserve takes advantage of the MISC Endeavor's modularity and as a massive plug-and-play capital class vessel, it has a host of different varieties. We support every single type of Endeavor that you can imagine. Everything from Hope class and Olympic class type vessels all the way to the more unique types of endeavors where there are combinations of modules that you may not expect to be put together. But there are many endeavors for the Endeavor class vessels. Now, when we talk about the Endeavor with its Discovery class, which takes advantage of the science focus and its service and crew, general research and general science modules, or the HOPE class with its medical bays and landing bays, or its Olympic class modules with its multiple biodomes that are designed to park near a star and generate special kinds of growth, we, all, we must look deeper into what it truly means to be a capital class vessel that is not geared towards combat in any way, shape, or form. The Endeavor represents more than just a big vessel. It represents a large amount of, well, hope. Something that is for greater aspects. Expanding our understanding of the unknown parts of the verse. Looking into the near stars with telescopes and finding and researching what we find in research and science-based modules. The Endeavor is something that back when we first incorporated the Strategic Reserve, we didn't quite understand the depths that it would take us. But we got there. And I would say that out of the Endeavors, we had some pushback from the community at large. We had non-investors into the Strategic Reserve who questioned the incorporation of it and development of such an, uh, a span into something greater. And what our response was back when we first incorporated the Strategic Reserve was it was a very limited amount of cost. If you look at the cost of a combat class capital ship, both back then and nowadays, it is a significant amount of resources. And all in all, we cannot discount that. We cannot discount what it truly cost to have these vessels. One single capital vessel of any size can actually allow for many endeavors to be secured, at least the greater hull of them. Using smaller vessels as a anchor point to create a hold, in many cases, the Strategic Reserve uses a Starfarer Gemini or Redeemer as one of the main modules, in some cases some of the Connie class. What we found was that we can take a medium class vessel and use that as a holding point to springboard into this capital class industrial vessel. That is the secret. That is the secret sauce for the strategic reserve. We learned back then that modules are not as expensive as the entire vessel itself. The sum of its parts in many cases may be more than the base vessel, but the base vessel is most of the cost. And by holding on to that vessel, in many cases, with this very, very small amount of resources, we found that we could develop options. And options are good. One of the questions that comes up in the community, both back then and now, is, are there changes in cost? Do you lose out on your opportunities if there is unapplied CCUs? with these cross chassis optimizations. And these upgrades, as we've told people, do not change. You can apply them even if they're negative valued or equal valued or greater valued at any time 
as long as you keep them in your hangar. So by having this resource kept close to you and not melted, you can apply it at any time. I hope this briefing on the Strategic Endeavor Reserve helps you understand more about the system. Okay, breaking character. <laughs> it's actually the Endeavor Strategic Reserve. And uh, I, I hope you had some, I hope that was some more fun than, uh, than <laughs> I just had a bit of fun. So I was trying to picture like a, maybe a shot like the Pioneer intro video, but like obviously less uh, lofty and um, well, I just don't have that resources and capabilities and uh, of an entire inspirational music accompaniment and everything else. I think it's custom made just for this and video and everything. But I hope I hope some of it kind of hinted through to give you my image of what the future is, if I'm right. I have very strong opinions on the Endeavor. Those who speak to me on Discord, Spectrum, Reddit, they, they know this already. But uh, for those who maybe just watch my videos and don't realize that yet, um, the Endeavor is going to go up in value significantly. It's sitting at 350 USD as of we're talking towards the end of 2023, and it's highly likely it'll stay that way for at least another year or two. But eventually... There will be movement on the Endeavor, and every single time we see more and more large MISC ships being developed, such as the Hull series, I feel that we're getting at least hints of the Endeavor, and all it's going to take is one slot to line up and enough resources to be able to copy and paste over from the Hull series, like I say a Hull D, for example, and all of a sudden we're going to have Endeavors. Um there will be highly likely like the retaliator bomber and the retaliator base situation. It'll be highly likely that they'll pump out one endeavor just to say it's off the backlog. Um, this is me speculating all of this, but I'm basing it on what we've seen in the past with modular ships and also the push for trying to remove the backlog and the push to get the whole series out. Uh, it's, yes, it's not as high pressure as the RSI series. Yes, I get that, et cetera, et cetera. All the different series in the RSI, I get it. But, um, it's highly likely that we will see more push for more hull and hull series and haulers as the game can support them. And then slowly after that, the Endeavor will see anything. And the minute we even see white box of a single version of a modular endeavor to be used as a loaner across the board for all endeavors such as the endeavor base hint hint um all of a sudden the price is going to skyrocket on these things i would highly this is me speculating fully into the stratosphere here and speculation i don't have anything to base this on but just based on the fact that it's a capital class ship that will be sitting with modules i think that an endeavor base even without modules, but as a loaner, it will have modules, just to just clarification there. Um, I see it probably sitting around the 600 USD price point, skyrocketing from the 350 USD price point. So honestly, uh, having what I recommend, as I did in the little preview at the beginning of this video, have a 10 USD Starfarer Gemini CCU to the Endeavor and just call it a day. You can pick them up at the bigger sales. IAE is an excellent choice. In my last video, I dropped it. I, I literally said it. I didn't just drop a hint. I said it. So please don't cry over spilt milk if you're hearing this after the uh, the endeavor is available. I I I, I said it out loud, and uh, multiple comments noted it and, and asked about you know in, in topics about it. My I answered back, uh, just to just to clarify. Um, and there's other options as well. So uh, as a reminder, if you go into pledge store, ship upgrades, and then you click all ships in the top left corner instead of just my ships, you can make a, you can make a CCU to anything from anything at any time to whatever's available. So when the Endeavor is available on misc day of a larger sale, uh, it, there's, your, there's your moment to pick it up. Uh, there's not that many of them, but when they are there, it's a very cheap pickup, and I hope it is for a while still. It, it's kind of a bittersweet situation. It hurts me because I want to see these things gain value. So, uh, <laughs> and also that will finally uh, quiet down those who do not like the Endeavor and can't stand the thing and uh, argue it'll never see the light of day. Uh, John Crew, to be fair, 
famously said a few years back that the Endeavor will be the last last ship ever developed, uh, sorry, last last ship that we have right now being developed, and it will be developed highly likely after the game is released in 1.0. So what, what he means by that is the game would be actually in full development years from now, and then finally they'll start looking at the Endeavor. I don't believe that's the case anymore. I think the amount of resources that are being thrown at the wall uh, from uh, the squadron crew and uh, the, f the the amount of teams that are just nailing the PU right now, if that's if, if even partial of that momentum is kept up and the forcing of the backlog to try to clear it all out, I think it's highly likely that we'll see at least one version treated as everybody gets it, even the Endeavor base gets this, and it'll probably be something like the Hope class, which is the flying hospital with the hangar, for those who don't know. Um, I would I would highly think that that's probably the case, uh, and a second a second opportunity would be the discovery class. Although that would have to open them up to develop a different ship where that module on the front can fly away. Uh, I think it would be better for them to just do the hope class and lock the module at the front and say, "Look, until we are ready for the piece, uh, the service and crew module, um, you can't fly this other piece away." Yes, it can fly away without that as service and crew module, but it can't function without it. it creates like a weird dynamic that they're going to have to figure out. Uh, so I, I think the hope class would be the one that makes the most sense to just lock in and just say, look, that's the deal. Um, and for the reference, uh, back in the day, Discovery class was 425 USD, Hope class was 450 USD, Olympic class, the one with the four biomes, so it's two biome modules, and it's four biomes overall, 500 USD, and then the master set back in the day was 900 USD, and I think it's over 1,000 now. So that was the deal uh, with the packages back in the day, and uh, I think that these things are an untapped market, uh, honestly, lately. Um, we have been beating the war drum so long. Combat caps, combat caps, combat caps, logistics caps, combat logistics caps, you know, all the different nuances of, of, of things that involve shooting or, or assisting things that shoot. Um, I think the Endeavor is like the one thing that really they can explore that's capital class that doesn't involve shooting or blowing things up and also is not in mining or salvaging. So this opens up the door to like more nuanced gameplay and more org support type stuff, especially that hope class. And I would be very curious to see how the game could be played in more remote locations uh, where you have those larger medical support areas. It would be interesting, especially once the server caps start growing in the next couple years. Uh, so... That's just my speculation off the charts there. So yes, yes, yes. But let's get back to reality. The Endeavor represents a lot, and it's the only ship, aside from like the six modular rooms of the Javelin that are directly stated to involve sciences like the cartography and such. Aside from that, um, there's not a lot in the cap capital ship world that involves just pure sciences and and industry that doesn't involve specifically salvage or specifically mining, and it's like hard locked to those things. The Endeavor has a lot of gameplay loops that it can act as, and over time, these modules can be developed and uh, really open the door to a lot of gameplay. And that's very exciting. And I, I think that the Endeavor in general, it represents its the hopes and dreams ship of me. I also contend that it is the new BMM coin. So for those that started out a long, long time ago, like me, we knew that the Banu Merchant Mode was going to get a lot bigger. We looked at the length and width on, on measurements and the mass and everything else, <laughs> and we said, no way it's going to stay that small. And a lot of us locked onto it. Got a hold of referrals, got a hold of cheap CCUs, and we managed to get to the CCU up to the Banu Merchantman back when it was like 250 USD and just on value, and it's just skyrocketed since. Then a lot of newer backers have a sour taste in their mouth because the BMM, while it's not out yet, the price and value is just going up and up and up and up, and it's getting more and more exciting the larger it is. Now, yes, you could be in the camp of I wish it wasn't so big, but it is what it is. The value of that ship, even if you don't want it, is valuable because you can just CCU to a different ship. 
And yeah, uh, if you wait too long to get your foot off the merry-go-round and jump off, it's a, maybe a little too fast and you might miss your CCU, but that's that's up to you. <laughs> you should at least check in on this game every few months or at the very least have an org mate and be like, yo, I, I'm, I'm thinking of this. Can you just let me know if, if, you, if you hear any rumblings of this type of ship? And, uh, you know, keep in the loop at least somehow every few months you should check in on your ships. But I digress about the seasonal type gameplay. That, that's fine. I, I respect that. Anyway, uh, back to topic. The Endeavor is the new BMM to me. And regardless of how you feel about the ship itself, having some holds in the CCU game, and not melted, but sitting in your hangar, are going to be extraordinarily valuable over time. Because the Endeavor base is going to have a ton of value, and it's sitting at the 350 USD price point right now. It's been locked in that place for a while. Um, I at the beginning of this video you saw <laughs> i truly do believe and I, I put my money where my mouth is um that the endeavor strategic reserve as i call it hell <laughs> just for fun uh is a is a real deal and yes i have pages pay, and pages of endeavor ccus now and my master set and two bases and um the two bases have lti the master set of obviously comes with lti and all those ccus I have at least some donor ships that would then become Endeavors, and I would not need them all. So if you're new to the Endeavor and you're saying, what the heck is this ship that Reggie is going on and on about? Um, there are some interesting uh, modules that actually don't even have gameplay yet, full disclosure, but they are very interesting. Like, for example, a telescope array. That literally is a the extremely powerful mobile stellar observatory, an array of instrumentation, and it looks a lot like a certain James Webb Space Telescope that is put on the other side of the moon, and in our real world, uh, that is unfolded and deployed off of the Endeavor, and it is designed to uh, create information for nav ship studies and of. Uh, dig into the deep depths of space and gather data that can then be sold on the open market. That's what it said anyway in the concept sale. Super colliders that allow for you to overclock ship modules on this ship and raising the bar on component performance as high as possible. And as I said earlier, general research and general science pods. So these are in my opinion, probably the more grounded of the devices, where the general research pod is, quote, intended for legal experimentation is authorized by UEE only, <laughs> uh, for cataloging new experimental data as well as producing cutting edge compounds. So you can dig in, you can read into the, read the line, read between the lines on that one if you'd like. Um, I would love to see, for the record, some crazy med lads take the endeavor into pyro and go live off in the in the boonies with this thing parked somewhere hidden away <laughs> and making uh wh who knows what <laughs> it'd be very cool <laughs> but um it's not gonna be me but uh, i think it'd be really funny to like one day be exploring in pyro and just find like some crazy laboratory gone wrong and we have to clear it out and um they were making like super soldiers or something <laughs> And uh, yeah, so the general science pod is your analytics module, and it's designed to gather uh, process data that's been gathered by the other modules, and um, such as the GRP or the telescope array. So uh, these are really simple modules. Some of the more interesting modules that over time we'll get are the fuel pod, which is basically massive drop tanks that are designed to work on the Endeavor to give it longer, longer legs, even longer than it already has. And the service equipment and crew pod, the CS. And the CS is designed to act as a standalone um, module for workshops. And also that is the module that allows additional crew. And it's kind of meant so when the front, which is a detachable ship of its own that comes with the base endeavor, by the way, uh, breaks away. If you have a CS, it's meant to be like a standalone installation. Translation, it has like its own power modules and everything else. And the ship can keep functioning while the front pod of the Endeavor 
goes off on its merry way on a scientific adventure. And the pod is pretty big. So the Explorer mod, the Explorer pod at the front is called the Explorer Cab, has special sh- armor and shielding designed to survive micrometeorite strikes to survey missions. And it can go, it's also designed to go super close to a star's corona, while so it can study in scientific information. And it is one of the few ships in the game that can go to deeper depths on Crusader because it's designed to handle the pressures of those places and risky operations. So it, it, the whole ship can't do that, but the front pod, which is its own ship, can do that. That's what scares, I think, CIG ship, ship teams is to look at this ship and go, how the heck do we handle all these promises? For example, on the landing bay, yes, that's right, it has its own uh, ship ship bay, <laughs> um, on the Hope class, and it's also designed to be used on other bays as well, you have to, they had to expand this thing, because originally it was promising to fit a Cuddy Red or two, and then the Cuddy Red kind of grew and grew, and so then they were like, well, and then also hangar hangar module uh, specs kind of changed over time, so it's going to have to be pretty large. And in general, the way this thing works is that it's supposed to be a two by three kind of grid. So each one of the modules takes up a two by one or a two by two array. So a hope class, for example, can be a medical bay, which is a two by two, which is the hospital, and then a landing bay, which is a two by one. And that will fully lock out the ship. And there is a limit on the landing bay. You can only mount one of them. So if you're thinking of a pocket, sorry, this isn't a pocket anything, but if you're thinking of a reasonable size carrier, uh, just understand it only is going to get one landing bay. So let's just say in the wildest circumstances that if a pair of Cuddy Reds, and that's that's a significantly large ship to fit into a hangar in the new hangar aspects, if a pair of Cuddy Reds could fit inside that landing bay in a two by one, that gives you some idea of the sheer scale this ship's going to need to be in our modern sizing of ships. And the medical bay is double the length of that. It's the same width, but the double the length because it's a two by two array. So that gives you some idea of the sheer scale of an endeavor. Now, yes, if we are thinking of a modernization, it would be actually easier for CIG to say, you know what? Uh... <laughs> It's going to run one cutty red, <laughs> um, but in its current in its concept sale, it did list directly say the landing bay has room to support multiple cutlass red ambulances and features complete decontamination facilities. Note that the landing bay was designed to support ambulance operations. It also functions alongside standard science modules and can support the upkeep of any sufficiently small spacecraft. So translation, if you didn't have a pair of Cuddy Reds, because I'm hard limiting it there. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even going to even entertain the idea that this is going to fit more than two Cuddy Reds. I'm sorry, but uh, I just can't see it, especially in modern day. Uh, two Cuddy Reds side by side would be astounding uh, in, in the scale. Remember, in the, in, in the design of what we, what the hangers have become, um, that's like a, po- it's beyond a pocket carrier. That's significant in size. But anyway, uh, so it can fit ships that are smaller, including combat ships. That would be very, very exciting. And at any rate, this is the ship of dreams. It can have its own escorts literally sitting in its hangar. It can go around doing scientific things to its heart's content. The only argument you can make against this thing is the frustration of you can only mount a couple modules at a time. And honestly, I'm okay with that. I think that it needs to have some limitations. Uh, otherwise, they would nerf it into the into the ground and just say, look, it can only run one module, or these modules can only produce a tiny little bit of resources, etc. And um, even though it's so huge and so sophisticated, uh, there's only so much you can do to balance this thing. So having only a couple modules at a time makes sense. But then again, isn't that a weird coincidence? I have a whole bunch of endeavors. It's not a weird just coincidence. I have a master set with all these different modules I can mount to my heart's content, all with LTI. It's weird, weird coincidence. I'm sure that's just a coincidence. 
I'm sure. I'm sure that there's just, you know, no other reason of why I'd have so many endeavors all put together in a strategic reserve. Well, that's going to do it for this one. Thank you all for hanging out with me. This was a fun kind of, not necessarily free form. I did have an idea. I did have a script, but I did kind of go off script like three times. <laughs> Let me know what you think. I appreciate comments both here on Reddit and of course on Discord if you want to talk in private. I, Like I said always, I always respond. I always enjoy that a thorough discussion. And I make these as much for you as I do for myself. So please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you to my long-term subscribers. I hope you had a great IAE. And once again, I hope you had a chance to grab an Endeavor if you were thinking of grabbing one. Uh, don't fret. Uh, once again, if you missed it and you're up, you're, you're, you, did, you, missed, you missed my last video, hey, you, don't worry. It'll be at the next big event. It'll be at Invicus Launch Week. And if it somehow isn't there, it'll be at IAE next year. And this... You got a long, you got a long lead time here. This is the type of thing that you pick up one or two CCUs for 10 USD a pop and sit on them. And then, like I say all the time in five years at a citizen con or something, you give me a, Hey, thanks, Red J. I appreciate it. I got my retirement fund, <laughs> you know, and I'm good to go. And yes, uh, there are methodologies to get, uh, your resources out of these chefs, even if you don't want the CCU. You will find friends and org mates and such that will be extremely thankful for you to even just hand them over a cost or something like that or whatever the case may be um, in the future when they're worth far, far more. So always remember that. Don't melt these type of things. Hang on to them. The Endeavor is not the only one, but it's the most extreme example right now. It is the new Banu Merchantman in my eyes. Once again, thank you all. Fly safe.